do you ever get the question, how do you do it all? How do you wear so many hats? Because I know you wear as many as I do. I'm a mom, a caregiver, a manager, a wife, a podcaster, a daughter, the list goes on. But I still have to find time for myself. And I hate to say that I'm balancing it all because I'm not. I'm managing it. I'm juggling it. And I want to share some tips throughout the video on how I'm able to do so. Because first, it's always about grace and understanding and knowing that I can't be 100% at all those titles at the same time. I might be the most dedicated mom, but I might not be able to be fully present as a wife. So follow along for these tips and leave a comment below on what you do. Good morning. Okay, so this is going to be a little look into what it's like being a medical mom. I get so many people who are like, well, you're a mom. Like, you're not a caregiver, you're a mom. I'm both. And today we have to go to the hospital to do a trach change for Callie, go up a size in her trach. And these are the things, like it's the day after Christmas. Um, We have to divide and conquer. Rome's not feeling that great. He's gonna stay home and watch Roman. We're gonna go to the hospital, bring in our nurse, but we have to bring our food. We have to bring a telephone order to make sure that we get the right order so the nurses can move forward with her cares. They can't do anything unless it's written down from a doctor. Like it's that precise. And the hospital is just very traumatic for Callie. So I have to be mentally prepared for what that looks like for her. So it's time to get dressed, head to the hospital. We try to avoid the hospital as much as possible, like do everything from home, but there's certain things where it's just the inevitable. Sometimes when you're taking care of these kids, what you look like is like the least important, but I try to like take care of myself. Hospital attire is always comfort first, okay? I think the hardest part about the medical mom journey is wearing both hats. Like wanting to be so loving to Callie and give her that nurturing um, love as a mom, but then also having to remember that I need to know her whole body. I need to know the medical side. I'm making these life changing decisions for her and I have to be confident that I'm doing the right thing. I have to do my research and that's just a lot of pressure to take on. It's a lot, a lot to take on mentally. I'm thankful for Rome because he helps carry that mental load of are we doing the right thing? That confirmation of this is what's best for her. But at the end of the day, like we're all just trying to figure it out as we go. There's no handbook for parenthood. And there's definitely not one when we were a medical parent. I think I'm gonna put the black sweatshirt on actually. But it's also like you take care of everybody else when you take care of yourself. And I think a lot of medical parents forget to take care of themselves. And then you just hit total burnout that's not fair to yourself or to them you don't see is the bag lady i have all the bags and the sections callie always has to have her section and her emergency bag the nurse has her bag callie's Emergency bag has everything in it. Cali suction, those are two things that have to go this everywhere. And then this is where the nurse sits and where Cali sits and they're on their way. Okay, let's go say bye to, the, to Roman because he tends to feel left out when he can't go. There he is. Bye bye, boo boo. Bye bye. Callie, we're here. It's gonna be okay, right? High five. <sighs> that was tough. She was like kicking and screaming and crying. <sighs> like the PTSD is so real. She hates being in the hospital. And even when it's like for her own good, for something she really needs, we try to advocate to doctors, like, can we do it at home? We have all the things. And sometimes they just have to see it for themselves of why we don't like to be there. But the doctor saw it, it was like, 
yeah let's try this at home while we're like i know <sighs> y'all nothing worked we, we put music on we put our favorite show on just tears the moment like we had a placer on that little table and it was like 45 minutes there so you had to get up drive a half hour there to be for there for 45 minutes drive 30 minutes there to not even do what we went there to do and i am tired but there's so much more to do today. And it's like, I have to learn how to compartmentalize things. Like take a moment, take all that in and then move on. Cause I can't change it. I can remember the moment and now know, like I have to advocate, advocate, push, push, push. No, we're not going in for this. But at this point it happened and she's home and she's smiling and she's back with her toys and all the things. And so she's good, but you can tell that just add one more layer of the trauma of the PTSD that she'll remember next time. I'm tired y'all. All right y'all, switched it up. Now it's time to go pod. Got my co-host right here. This is the life of juggling many roles. Got my girl right here in better spirits. Come here, Callie. Hi love. Hi. Are we better now that we're home? We're in our element now. Things must go on y'all. Come on, we have kisses. Mwah, thank you. All right, y'all. If you don't know, then you should know that Rome and I have a podcast, The Rebirth of Life and Love. It is just one of the many things we do, but we really wanted to create like a platform for ourselves, take a step away from the kids and talk more about relationships and relatable relationships. So it's, it's work, <laughs> but we've got our own creator space that we come and we record in. It's one of the many things that we do. This is where we record y'all. So you just see like how my day goes, like two kids, medical appointment, had to kind of just like take a minute, collect myself, switch it over, business mode. But this is kind of what you do when you juggle a lot of things. We, we caught up in our goals and it was nice to think about what do we want for the kids and what does that look like? And I think one thing I'll say too is that what made this activity really helpful was that we started everything with a goal, a goal that we agreed on. All right, y'all. One of the many things we are doing this week is checkups. This little boy. You did it. We just wrapped up Roman's nine month appointment. He did really good. He had to get two shots to prepare for a trip to Mexico. It was a bit of a fiasco getting out the door, but the appointment was at 11.45 and not 10.45. But you did so good. You want to tell him that you're a big boy? Oh, we're teething. We got two more teeth coming up up top, huh? Can you jump? Whoa! If you've been a follower for a while, then you know about the black bunnies. And we're coming back with little bunny. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Ooh. Say yeah, 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 yeah.
what our life looks like. I'm working, my meeting just got canceled. The kids, we put the gate up. The kids got toys out. They can go all over here. Rome's in here, up, working. They can go in here. Can we do an interview about the interview? So this was a different morning. Rome had an interview with who? So I had an interview with, uh, they're a, a ABC affiliate out here in Seattle. Actually, it's a CW affiliate out here in Seattle. And so they reached out to me about a week ago or a few, few weeks ago and was just like, I love your story. I love what you're doing on social. Um, would you want to come on the show and talk more about what you're doing, how you're advocating for children with disability, um, and how you became a social media influencer. So I was like, dope, let me get out of my comfort zone in 2024 because this is something I wouldn't have typically done. And so today we talked a lot about uh, my journey, Callie's journey, what she's been through. This girl. And really they're like, what's the, the craziest question? It's not even crazy, but the best question I think is they were just like, what's your favorite thing about your daughter? What is your favorite thing about your daughter, Callie? You know, there's a lot. I think my favorite thing about my daughter, Callie, is that she is, she's tenacious. Mm. Now, I always tell people, um, this little girl is my biggest inspiration. And I see her, um, so her middle name is Joy, which my wife came up with. So that was genius on, on that part. But she is just such a happy little girl. And she's had, you know, in her almost four years of life, 25-ish surgeries wow. it seems like um and major surgeries like uh as you see now this is Callie she had a surgery in April 2022 where they essentially moved out her forehead and her face by an inch wow. and that was a really daunting surgery um a hard recovery and as you see this little girl just continues to smile continues to bring joy and her joy is infectious remarkable she is always smiling thank yeah. you so much for sharing that story and we like your hat i was just thinking that swag. too <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'm so proud of my hubby like i said this is not your standard morning for us but it's been an impactful 2024 so far <laughs> is it yummy let's get a section callie All right, all done. It's time to go use our voice and do speech. Lunch time for mama, which means speech time for Callie. Come on, girl. We're gonna take the iPad, we're gonna go downstairs, we're gonna use our voice. So when you need help, how do you sign help? Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. this, but she does like, she does this, or sometimes she does it like that, but she can't get her thumb up, but yeah. she's been signing help. so good, Poppy. Okay, open the door. Yeah. Brother's up. Yeah. Let's go see brother. Oh my goodness, we never get a three hour nap. Three hour nap? What do we do to deserve that? Okay, Callie been out here playing. She been missing you. You miss brother? Yeah. Okay, let's get him out. All right, let's go. Where should we go? Wow, look at this whole set. Callie wants to show you. Daddy Eden, 